back, everybody. Our next speaker is going to be Mark Behrens, who will tell us about FP synthetic BO resolutions. Thank you. And, and just to be clear, this is a, a, a 50 minute talk. I'm glad to understand. Is that correct? Uh, I think it might be scheduled for 45, but I don't think it. Oh, 45 minute talk. OK, OK, well, we'll just see what I get to here. Um, so uh, yeah, this this uh, I, this talk, uh, I've been. So, well, let me just get on into it since I only have 45 minutes. So, um, so, so basically, um, uh, an object that I'm interested in talking about is, um, is the, uh, uh, is, is the R based atom spectral sequence for a spectrum X. And here R is some ring spectrum. And uh, and so 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 as we're you know as we're familiar with um, um, the um, a lot of times when we form the spectral sequence, what we usually do is we do something like we take we take the 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 unit from the sphere to R, and we call the the augmentation ideal R bar, and uh, and then we 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 basically uh, filter X by a. Uh, smashing with powers of R bar. So we take the filtration with respect to this augmentation ideal. And that's the R based atoms, atoms filtration. And uh, then you get a spectral sequence with, whose E1 page um, is the homotopy groups of the associated graded, which look like this, and which uh, converges to the, uh, the R nilpotent completion of X. Um, great. Okay, um, so uh, so that's mainly meant to establish notation, and um, and um, uh, so so you know the the most common things that we choose R to be are things like R to be um, HFP, or maybe if you're like a fancy modern person, you might just write FP, I uh, and I. Uh, uh, that's uh, uh, the atom spectral sequence, the classical mod P atom spectral sequence. And, and another popular choice is R equals MU, or maybe you're working P locally and R equals BP. And then you're looking at the Adams Novikov spectral sequence. But um, Mohold uh, popularized uh, the use of uh, 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 strange other choices of R. And and a, a favorite of his was was R equals B O. And this is where his famous or infamous, depending on who you are and how you feel reading the paper, is uh, his paper B O resolutions. Uh, it's really a spectacular piece of work, and it span and it it it's, it begins a whole bunch of papers of him and his collaborators, uh, 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 Don Davis, uh, Wolfgang Lohmann, uh, many, uh, many other people, where he uses these BO resolutions to just understand the image of J and all sorts of things surrounding the image of J and its con and geometric problems, attacking them using homotopy theory. Um, but this BO-based atom spectral sequence, um, so, so these other atom spectral sequences, the, one of the things that we like about them is that is 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 in these particular cases R smash R is a uh, uh, flat in the sense that pi star R smash R is flat over R star, and then this implies that the E two page is like X over R star R uh, of uh, you know R star R star X, and uh, and then we can use homological algebra to start doing our computations because this is really big and annoying. And uh, one of the problems with R equals BO is it's not flat. Um, so uh, Mohold has to start with this big E1 term and kind of manually get a manageable E2 term and, uh, and, then, and, then, and then proceed from there, okay? And um, his, his uh, study of the BO-based atom spectral sequence for the sphere uh, resulted in him understanding uh, the uh, V1 periodic homotopy groups of the sphere. 
okay? And its connection to the image of J. And uh, this, this leads to, uh, um, I, don't, I don't necessarily think it was a conjecture at the time, but it nevertheless gets proven. Uh, the, the, this leads to a proof of the telescope conjecture. For uh, P equals two at chromatic height N equals one. It's kind of a proof by manual computation because this computes, this converges to the homotopy groups of the sphere. Uh, and uh, and then, so it's like the unlocalized homotopy groups, but then the connection with BO and B1 periodic homotopy allow you to identify the contribution of these unlocalized homotopy groups to the V1 periodic homotopy groups. Um, Miller uh, studied, this was at P equals two, Miller studied the odd primary version. So the, here we get the telescope conjecture at P odd, uh, N equals one. And, uh, and here, uh, but Miller just studied it by using the, see the problem with the Adam Novikov spectral sequence is that when you localize the Adams Novikov spectral sequence, it doesn't converge to the telescopic homotopy groups. It converges to the KN local homotopy groups. Um, but the, the Adams spectral sequence localizes to converge to the telescopic homotopy groups. And Miller studied the localized Adams spectral sequence at an odd prime. And um, so this, so so he he observed that while the E2 term of the so he he studied the atom spectral se the localized atom spectral sequence for the mod p more spectrum and uh, and he found that this E2 page um, after you localize it with respect to v1 is very computable and uh, you can complete you can compute it completely as like a polynomial tensor and exterior on infinitely many generators and then he computed a key D2 differential using this famous technique called the Miller square, uh, which is why his paper is called On Relations Between. I have dot, 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 because it's like one of the longest titles in, of any paper in history. Uh, but I, I, and then and he computed this, this D2 differential, which I'll call the Miller differential, that, 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 that kills almost everything off. And I, uh, except for an exterior algebra and, and, and gives you this computation of the V1 periodic homotopy group of groups of the mod P more spectrum. Okay. Um, so this is all um, this is all with the goal of trying to understand the V1 periodic homotopy groups of the sphere. But the um, one one thing that is it may be maybe maybe it's less clear from my discussion of Mohowald and maybe more clear from my discussion of Miller is that these localized homotopy groups, are, these localized X groups are very big, okay? It's infinitely generated, it's huge, whereas this thing is very small. And so it's kind of miraculous that this one, this, 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 a bunch of D2 differentials kill most of everything off and leave this very small, finitely generated, at least finitely generated over FP adjoined V1, V1 inverse answer. And um, I, so I just want to take a step back and um, take a, and, and talk about the atom spectral sequence for a moment. So let's let's take a look at a picture of the atom spectral sequence. So this is this is a picture that was produced by Isaacson, Wang, and Zhu in their wonderful collaboration, where they're just absolutely annihilating these computations and and, and taking them to new levels. Um, and um, so here's a picture of the atom spectral sequence for the sphere at P equals two, okay? The classical mod P atom spectral sequence. And uh, one thing you see when you, when you look at this spectral sequence is that, is that if you look above a certain level, okay? If you look above a certain level, then above that level, everything is V1 periodic. And you know that's sort of you know you know rather than say specifically what I mean by that, I'll just kind of uh, I'll, I'll I'll say something specific later, but uh, but you know these 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 little guys. So V one is is two period is, is degree two. So these are like V these eightfold periodic pattern is V one to the fourth periodic, and then you 
and then you see these little these little things here you know that like like these these come at a a, a little bit of a, a a longer period but they 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 keep coming with a regularity of these are v1 to the eighth periodic and then you get these like longer strings uh that are that are you know have a have a longer period to them uh is it over here so uh so anyway uh, uh everything has this periodicity but the period you know every element has a different within this region has a v1 to the n you know a, you know two to the i period for a different i and and may establish that above a certain line a line of slope one fifth uh everything is is v1 periodic okay and so the the X groups are isomorphic to the V1 periodic X groups, okay? And so um, what you see is, is that above this, above this line, um, the, the image of J, uh, which is the actual V1 periodic homotopy, is, um, is, 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 is very small, but there is, of course, a lot of stuff above this line. And... And 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 you know so the E infinity page is 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 relatively small you know this is like what what you know what you start you know, what what you start to see in in E infinity it's 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 relatively small it's just this little this is this is this is all you get from the V one periodic homotopy of the sphere uh, you know in E infinity it's just this small piece but. Even though we're just getting this little edge here, um, there's all this other stuff that went a little too far, but who cares? Um, there's all this other stuff that just kills itself all off. Okay, and so so it's so that the the lesson here is is that the v1 periodic x groups are huge. Um, but the uh, but most of it has to die in order to create the v1 periodic homotopy groups of the sphere. Now, so it, what if you so so normally you might only care about the v1 periodic homotopy groups of the sphere, but what if you actually want to know all these differentials in the atom spectral sequence that you know this pattern of everything killing itself off? Maybe that would be a good thing to know too. And um, that was studied by at, at P odd by Michael Andrews in his thesis, um, where he he uh, completely computes uh, the uh, this v one periodic uh, um, part of the uh, of the mod p atom spectral sequence or the sphere. Just the just the V one periodic region. And um and and then and 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 this this computation, um it's both aesthetically pleasing, um, but but it also has some some real consequences. Um so there's you can also talk about doing this at the prime too, though it's much more complicated. Um and uh uh um, it's related to this uh, program of Stoltz to understand high dimensional, highly connected manifolds, where I guess what you want to do, you know, what, you know, what you want to do is you want to show that above a certain line, the only elements in E infinity of the atom spectral sequence come from the image of J. And uh, if you choose that line to be the one fifth line, that's then the statement that you know that, that all the rest of this v1 periodic x groups has to kill itself out, off and just leave the the image of j and uh, uh, this is all very closely connected to uh, the work of Berkland Hahn and Sanger which um, pushed Stoltz's program uh, uh, way further um, using you know by establishing theorems like this using modern technology and and that that modern technology is this uh, theory of synthetic spectra. And uh, this is a long story that um, I would say probably begins with the work of Georgia Wang and Zhu and uh, Isaacson Wang and Zhu, uh, 
where I, um, you know, that results in these these amazing computations, so these pictures I was showing you of the atom spectral sequence. And the basic idea uh, there is to, is to, well, they use motivic, complex motivic homotopy theory, but, but ultimately this, this turns out to be a story that you might call MU synthetic homotopy theory, where um, you relate the atoms in the atoms Novikov spectral sequence. And uh, this is made much more precise in the work of Georgia Isaacson Kraus Arica and Stragowski. And Stragowski, uh, in particular, describes a very general setup where you 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 just start with your your R. You want to you want to think about doing uh, atoms resolutions with respect to this ring R. And so so starting with a, a classical spectrum X. Um, you 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 produce a new category called synthetic spectra, and and I I I kind of think about these things in the Georgia Isaacson Kraus Arica model. To be honest with you, um, as, as modules over something in some category of filtered spectra, and uh, and that and this uh, so the, the 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 machinery gives you uh, basically the process of taking R atoms filtration gives rise to an object in this. In this synthetic category, and um, and the, the this category has the following property: um, the 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 homotopy groups are 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 now bigraded instead of singly graded, and they also have the structure of being a module over a polynomial algebra on one generator, and that 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 generator I'm going to call lambda today, and it lives in degree zero comma minus one. Um, now I want to highlight something, which is that um, I chose to index my atom spectral sequence in an unconventional way. Um, the, I, I chose, I indexed it n comma s, where here n is the stem and s is the atoms filtration, okay, the R atoms filtration. So that's how I'm indexing my atom spectral sequences. And I'm also choosing to index my, there are different ways of indexing the synthetic spectra. I'm gonna choose what, if, if you're in the know, you might say the, the Birkeland convention or something, uh, which is uh, which is that, that oops, I didn't wanna do that. Um, I wanted to do this. Uh, so, so, that, so basically uh, this, uh, these homotopy groups uh, relate Relate the I uh, I uh, relate the I uh, I. Uh, these bigraded homotopy groups not only tell you about the homotopy groups of X, but they also tell you about the R-based atom spectral sequence converging to X. So here I'm going to put a, a S here, and uh, and so 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 this would be the the E2 page. So. When you consider the co lambda is an element in the stable stems, when you consider the cofiber of lambda, then then you get the uh, the E two N S of X. Okay, so the bigraded homotopy groups of X mod lambda is the E two page of the R based atom spectral sequence. The if you invert lambda, the homotopy groups here are just the 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 homotopy groups of of, of 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 x itself okay and uh and the i uh, i uh, and the the i uh, i uh, if and in general in general the structure of these migrated homotopy groups of x together with uh this module structure tell you everything you need to know more or less to reconstruct the r based atom spectral sequence for x so it's like these bigraded homotopy groups are the data of a spectral sequence. You have a new category where now the objects of the category are filtered spectra and the homotopy groups are the associated spectral sequences. Um, let me explain this ever so slightly in the case of the atom spectral sequence. So let's go back over here. So, in the case of the uh, atom spectral sequence, uh, say we want to talk about, uh, you know, how do I relate the F2 synthetic homotopy groups uh, uh, of the sphere uh, to, uh, 
to the uh, uh, to the Adams chart and its differentials. So let's make that clear. Uh, so it 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 is you know so obviously the E two page is the bigraded homotopy groups of the sphere mod lambda. So if you want to, so we're, now we're working in in F in in F F two synthetic. So you've got so you've got the F two synthetic sphere mod lambda. It's bigraded homotopy groups. It's just this picture exactly. Okay, and um. And then, um, uh, and so say if you're computing the bi-graded, how do you how do you read off the bi-graded homotopy groups of 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 of, of S itself? Well, what you do is you you imagine that each one of these dots has a little lambda tower attached to it, and lambda points downwards. So so it's like here's lambda in degree zero minus one, and it's like each one of these dots has a little lambda tower pointing down from it. And so um, and so these lambda torsion free parts correspond to the permanent cycles in the spectral sequence. But when you have a differential, it creates lambda torsion. So I, I like to think about it like take the atom spectral sequence, but then make every differential a D1 look like an atom's D1. So so here. This the hop invariant differential. I'm instead going to think about it as instead of thinking about the hop differential as d two of h four equals h naught h three squared. I'm going to instead think about it sort of like d of h four equals uh, uh, lambda uh, h naught h three squared. So. Think about it like like this, and uh, and so the the so then in the in the in the in the in the bigraded homotopy groups you would just see that um, you would have this element h naught h three squared would be there, but it would be lambda torsion, and because it's lambda to the one torsion, that would tell you that it got hit by a d two differential, and uh, uh, et cetera. Okay. So that's basically how this works. And if you're lambda in general, if you're if in, in these bi-graded homotopy groups, lambda to the i torsion, if you're exact lambda to the i torsion, this means that you're that you're hit by a di plus one differential. Okay. So um, and if you're lambda torsion free, you're a permanent cycle. Okay, so um, uh, right. So now let's go back over here, and uh, and so so here's the here's the the name. Oh, so I wanted to mention a couple other pieces of work um, that are very recent. Uh, so there's this uh, paper of Carrick and Davis where they compute the atom spectral sequence of the J spectrum. So so they they take advantage. So like one thing we see in Brooklyn, Hahn and Sanger is the idea that that computing synthetic homotopy groups is like computing a spectral sequence. And this is something that 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 Isaacson, Wang and Zhu used at the outset of their project where they observed that by computing the these MU synthetic or complex uh, motivic homotopy of the sphere, they essentially were computing the adams novikov spectral sequence of the sphere. In fact, one may regard the Isaacson Wang Zhu, what they're doing is they're they're using the atoms, the the they're using the MU synthetic atom spectral sequence to compute the classical Adams Novikov spectral sequence. And um what Carrick and Davis, they employ this philosophy to compute the atom spectral sequence for the J spectrum uh, by, by, uh, uh, by, by, uh, by thinking about the J sequence uh, synthetically. At least that's what I gather is what happens in their paper. It's so new, I haven't really had a chance to fully finish reading it. Uh, but um, I, but, but a, a notable feature of this is it it bypasses the need to actually compute things like the homology of J and stuff like that. You're just like, I'm just gonna go straight for the E2 page uh, and then compute all the differentials as well. Um, 
And uh, um, and then we also see in the very recent paper of Bayer, Johnson, Merrick, uh, where they study uh, the uh, the the now they're st now now what they're doing is they're is they're thinking about um, they're working in the category of FP synthetic spectra, but then they run the uh, the atom spectral sequence based on the synthetic analog of BP. So this is this this BP underline is an element of the uh, FP synthetic category, and uh, uh, and so then they're computing the atom spectral sequence based on that in this category. So it's like they're computing the mod P atom spectral sequence of the sphere using the FP synthetic atoms Novikov spectral sequence. So my goal today is to talk about. Uh, um, I would like to try to compute the atom spectral sequence, the sphere, explicitly in the V1 periodic region. So this, you know, this area where all these, I want to know the explicit structure of this uh, in terms of, uh, I'm going to use the BO underline based atom spectral sequence to do this computation. I just looked up and I saw the chat has a bunch of numbers on it. Um, I would invite, if, if, if I don't know if you guys are talking amongst yourselves or talking to me, but please feel free to just unmute yourself and ask a question if there's a question. As otherwise, I'll get confused if I start clicking on things. Okay, um, great. Uh, so that's the plan. Does that make sense? Okay, and I think I used up most of my talk to tell you what the plan is. So <laughs> that's okay. Um, all right, so uh, uh, let's uh, now just launch right into it. So, um, so here's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna first, I'm gonna first talk about the easy, the easy case, the quote unquote easy case. I want to think about, I want, so I, I want to think about L which is the, 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 uh, another name for BP brackets one, the atom sum end. And, uh, and, and, and I want to uh, uh, compute the, the, I'm gonna take the synthetic analog of L. So I wanna think about, so now L, uh, ooh, let's get another, another there, let's do it like this. L underline is an element of the, of the FP synthetic category. And, 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 and and so the 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 atom spectral sequence for L collapses. So the the bigraded homotopy groups of this thing look just like the atom Z two page for L. Namely, it, it looks like it looks like. Oops, let me make that a little finer. Um, it's like this. So here, every box is two units in the way that I'm drawing this thing. So we know that the homotopy groups, the bi-graded homotopy groups of L underline is going to be, so there's a little subtlety in this FP synthetic thing, which is that, um, you know, it's torsion free, um, but yet you have this element V0 it's you know and, and you know and 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 the the little thing to, to remember so each one of these dots each one of these dots here is supposed to be like a copy of uh uh it's supposed to be a copy of of fp a join lambda but it's not actually p torsion there's a um um it's it's p torsion free there's a there's a there's a little extension between these dots so the 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 actual bi bi graded homotopy groups of this thing is uh is is uh, so I'm I'm personally working in the P complete version uh, uh, of this synthetic world. So it's ZP. I join uh, uh, V zero and lambda module a relation that P equals lambda V zero and then a join V one. Okay, and uh, uh, so your picture looks something like this, but then all these are polynomial algebras and lambda. Okay. And Mark, isn't isn't V one in degree four? It's in degree four. Thank you. Sorry, I drew this wrong. Thank you. This would be BP brackets one at P equals two. There we go. That looks a little better. 
Thank you. Was that Bert talking? Okay. Hey. All right. Does that look a little better? Okay. So, um, sorry, I'm best not here. I wanted to uh, ask a clarifying question, although you may have said this already. So, um, when you say this is BP1 in synthetic spectra or uh, something along those lines, yeah. um, that am I uh, wrong to think that this is different than just take the usual spectrum and push it into synthetic spectra? Is it like some internal construction okay. in this world? Oh. Or? No, you just, I mean, when you push it, but in the, there's, there's like a, there's a bad and good way to push it. So you push it in the good way. So there's this functor <laughs> that Piotr describes called new. new uh, okay, so it's new of that thing. Okay. Yeah, or there's a functor that, that, uh, that Georgia Isaacson Krauser record described called gamma, and it's, it's that guy. Okay. So basically, it's, it's the functor that takes this and endows it with its atoms filtration and takes the resulting object. Got it. Thank you. So, um, I, uh, right. Okay. And um, now there's there is there is something really cool about this synthetic world, which is that if you think about the objects as being like filtered spectra that that give rise to spectral sequences, then you can do homotopical operations in this world and essentially create new spectral sequences out of old spectral sequence, like but like taking cofibers and you know all manner of stuff. And so, so I'm going to define uh, the 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 V1 periodic atom spectral sequence for the sphere in, by defining an object in the synthetic category. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just so I'm just going to observe that using this functor that you know we you know that using by, basically by using the fact that V1 from uh, from from sigma two p minus one and sorry this picture was drawn at p equals three, um, but I, I I I mean you can do this at any prime. Um, v one v one goes from uh, uh, here to here, but it has atoms filtration one. That's a little too thick. It has atoms filtration one, and so therefore you can really think about it. Um, as 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 giving you a map from 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 here comma one uh, s mod underline s mod p in this synthetic world. Now I can put s mod v zero uh, to to uh, s mod v zero. So so um I and so then um or more generally, if you put a v zero to the 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 i here. Then, then there is then there is some v one to the j self map on that thing, uh, and uh, and then that would be like this with a, this is supposed to be j's over here, and 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 so, and so then then you can you can take the 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 inverse limit over i of the of the localizations with respect to these fancy v one self maps of the uh, of the s underline mod v zero to the 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 i, and uh, and 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 this is what I mean by uh, this is my work my primitive definition for v one inverse s. And and the spectral sequence associated to this, the bi-graded homotopy groups of this thing give rise to the V1 local atom spectral sequence that converge to the homotopy groups of the T1 localization of the sphere. And um I I okay. So that's kind of cool. And now I want to compute this using L. So I want to run the L-based atom spectral sequence in this synthetic world to compute these bi-graded homotopy groups and hence compute this spectral sequence. So basically, I'm trying to redo Michael Andrews' thesis using this technology. And um, so, so this leads to a kind of a sequence uh, of spectral sequences. Uh, so there's, of course, the the one we're interested in studying, 
Um, but then, then, um, but now I'm doing at the E2 page. And so I just told you the E1 page is like, or the E2 page is not an X group, but it turns out that when you localize it, it is an X group. So it, it turns out that, that L, L, uh, uh, smash L is flat if you invert V1, okay? And uh, and so I'm gonna call this uh, uh, V1 inverse gamma L. So this is like a kind of hop algebra uh, corresponding or hop, yeah, is a hop algebraid corresponding to uh, uh, L. And the X groups of this thing is this E2 page, okay? And um, so I, this is this hop algebraid is a very interesting object. Uh, uh, I describe it here. Um, this basically dovetails with the classical study of of of, of L smash L. Uh, it was done by many people. Um, one notable name of somebody who has devoted a lot of energy um, and uh, done great, amazing work on the on the L-based at atom spectral sequence is Jesus Gonzalez. And, uh, you know, this is sort of anal basically, you know, a restatement of a lot of his results. Um, but the, the uh, uh, if you take the, uh, it's, it's easier to take the lambda associated graded of, of this thing. And then it has, has the structure of, uh, I should probably have put up a lambda in there. It has the structure of FP adjoin lambda. Oh, that, that's what the L is. The L is lambda. <laughs> I have to admit that I kept on meaning to really prepare this talk amazingly, but I just started, I'm gonna show you these computations. I got sucked into these computations and couldn't get myself to prepare the talk because I just couldn't stop computing. So, okay. Um, so, so this is this is the structure of the associated graded, um, and notice you have these TIs, um, and then and then you have a relation, and um, this should remind you of the Morava stabilizer algebra. This this V one inverse gamma L guy is a kind of synthetic analog of the Morava stabilizer algebra. Okay, now. You know, we're used to these KN local computations as being some kind of finite computation. But I just showed you that, you know, that when you when you look at the X groups themselves, they're like way not finite, finitely generated in any sense. And so so the chromatic story is very different. It's not like you can just make a small resolution. You can only make big resolutions. But an object that is a constant here is this is this is this uh, Morava stabilizer algebra is your is your primary object of study and and the, the and what I'm going to do basically is kind of like what 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 the we you know what the 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 Bear Johnson Merrick or 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 or, or Isaacson Wang Zhu you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically take formulas in this Hop algebra and then and then and then studying how they behave. Um, with respect to the lambda, I'll then I'll then extract atoms differentials out of these formulas. Okay, if I ever get there, I'm probably about out of time, but I'll I'll at least show you some pictures and say a few things, and hopefully it gives you an idea of what I'm talking about. Okay, so um so then um but but this is still a complicated object to study, and 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 so it's it's a little yeah so 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 this is this is. Basically, this associated graded is the easier, e easier object to study. So here I'm, I'm studying the associated graded by just working mod lambda. And so this is like a lambda Bachstein spectral sequence here. Uh, that'll get me from here to here. And then I still need to understand these things. And so there's a kind of classical thing that was developed by uh, Mohowald, Wellman, studied by Gonzalez, called a weight spectral sequence. It gives me from here to here. And uh, so this weight spectral sequence ends up looking, it's kind of like a maze spectral sequence. So it, it, it ends up looking like FP adjoined V0. I guess I'm working mod lambda, so it's not there. Ooh, that was too much to delete. Uh, uh, let's just do that. Yeah, FP adjoined V0, V1 plus or minus, and you have H10, H20, and B10, B1, uh, that should have been B20. Uh, 
Okay. And, uh, and, and converges to this thing. Um, let me just jump right into it since I can see my time is not my friend. I am, so I, I, right. So here's a, here's a picture of the, of the, of the atom spectral sequence uh, at P equals three. And uh, uh, so, so, so the first thing you do is, is there's some very easy differentials you run in the weight spectral sequence. Uh, so, so you, you, you get like, like, you know, these, these, these are, these, these formulas are just, you know, you're used to your usual A to R of V1 equals V1 plus PT1. Well, this translates in the synthetic world to saying that, that, that D of V1 is V0 H10. And that gives you this differential here. Um, and, uh, and then, and then, um, and then, then, you know, similarly, you can, you can take the, the, the third power of V1 and then compute that, that D of V1 cubed should be uh, V0 cubed uh, H11. And so that makes this, you know, this be a V0 tower of this length. Okay. And then, um, and then there's a slightly trickier differential. Um, and this is sort of a key thing that the general generalized form of which is a, a sort of integral part of Andrews' thesis, but uh, uh, it turns out there's a synthetic way to get these differentials, and uh, and and this this gives us the 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 height of the the v zero tower on v one zero. Now this h one one and h two zero are related. So so if you if you it, it, use that relation in gamma, that relation I showed you says that v one times h11 is v0 times h20 so so i uh, so that's the relation h11 and h20 are kind of uh, one in the same they're melded by this relation so these so any differentials that involve h11 then automatically involve h20 so for instance i can then periodically move this differential over here and then, and then, and then that tells me on v one zero v one squared h two zero that this what this should be. And notice the height's one larger because of the relation. Um, okay, um, that's basically what we're doing here. Okay, and then here's another one of those fancy differentials I mentioned h two zero. This is you know this uh, th this makes the right height on on v one one, and then d of v1 to the ninth kills v0 to the ninth h1 h12 and gives us the length of this tower over here and so we get this sort of you know the, the v1 periodic thing where we get these different length towers and depending on the length of the tower like you know you get different period lengths uh, corresponding to uh, corresponding to to those those lengths okay but then you want to know about differentials and um, here's where the synthetic really shines. So, uh, so, so, so here's a here's a nice little uh, computation in gamma l that you wouldn't be able to do regularly. So I, I check this out. If I take what happens when I take d of d of say t one to the p. Well, 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 that's going to be because of the bar complex. I have to put a minus sign here. It's going to be a, a summation over 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 uh, i plus j equals p of i uh, uh, p choose i of of t one to the i uh, t one to the j. Um, but but in this synthetic world, um, that's p times something or lambda v zero times something, um, and the something that it's times is this little bugger, uh, I'll put a plus here and put a minus here, uh, one over P summation one I plus J equals P of uh, P choose I of T one to the I, uh, T one to the J. And you will recognize this as B one zero. So um, this gives me the differential, the hop invariant one differential D of H one one is V, v zero, you know, lambda v zero times times b one zero, and 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 then when I use the relation, that turns into this kind of differential. 
And these are the Miller differentials, okay? And so then the Miller differentials, as, as uh, Andrews uh, describes in his thesis, um, they end up killing, all these D2 differentials end up killing almost everything, okay? It, it, it's really, uh, let's go back up over here for a second. I mean, like, you know, these D2 differentials are, are, are doing like, there's all these places where you get these pairwise patterns and the, the, the D2 differentials just pairwise kill, kill off everything. Uh, except with one notable exception that you're probably familiar with. Um, when, you, when you look near the hop invariant one elements, you have this increasing length differential phenomenon where you start with some D2s and then, and then they turn into D3s, and then, then you get permanent cycles, okay? And, and, and so where do those D3s come from? Well, those are also explained in the synthetic perspective because we already know that the height of this tower, this tower, so this tower was killed by H20. So that means lambda times H20 um, is, is, is killing lambda times the tower, but lambda times the tower was also killed by, by H12. So, so basically in effect, you can add these two terms together to make a new thing uh, that has a longer differential. And, and that explains the D3s. And by successfully do, successively doing that, you get this very familiar thing where you, where you first start with the D2s and then you and then you enter into a D3 re regime. Uh, I seem to have lost track of what I'm doing here. There we are, a D3 regime. Uh, and then you, you get a, a D4 regime and then, then you end up with, 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 with the, the, the image of J on the, on the top. And basically out of time. So I just wanna flash a few pretty pictures at you and then that's it. Uh, so that's the technique. So, um, you know, you can do this in the, you can do this in the classical, um, let me just go right over here. Do this for the classical atom spectral sequence at the prime two. And um, this provides a really nice way to get at all these differentials in this V1 periodic region um, by just, you just do this trick like over and over and over again. It's a little more complicated, but you know, it, it's totally doable. And then, then after I was doing this for a while, I had this crazy idea, which was, which was, wait a second, when you think about the TMF, the atom spectral sequence for computing TMF, the E2 term is entirely V1 periodic. So if you know the differentials in the V1 periodic region, you like know all the differentials. And so I decided to do a relative BO resolution uh, uh, in the synthetic category for TMF. Um, and I, I, this is very closely related to something called the davis mohowald spectral sequence, but with a little twist on it. And, and, and um, well, it's too much to explain, except to say, of course, everything is V1 periodic, so now everything gets described. But moreover, this is also a way to compute all of these differentials. Um, and uh, so it's a, it's a way not nearly as precise as what's done, say, for instance, in the Bruner Ragnus book, where they are very careful of multiplicative structure, et cetera. But if you, if you just want to know some additive information, this is, this is kind of a cool way to get at it. Probably a good way for place for me to end my talk.